Today we're going to be taking a look at the E600 LFP portable power station from Pecron and performing a few different tests to see how it holds up to the manufacturer's stated specs and also running a charging test with their PV200 200 watt solar panel. And I'll leave you with my final thoughts and I'll show you how it stacks up to some of the other power stations that I've tested in the past to help you decide whether or not this is something that you should actually buy. But overall I was very impressed with it because it's highly capable and it exceeded my expectations in most of my testing. And it offers excellent value and I highly recommend it. And if you want to pick up the power station and support my channel at the same time, you can use the links down in the description below. Low. All right, so this is the E600 LFP, and this is a lithium iron phosphate based power station, and it's rated for over 3,500 charge cycles with a 614 watt hour stated capacity. It has a large LCD display, and this is going to give you the remaining battery life as a percentage, the input and output speeds in watts, an estimation of the remaining runtime, as well as basic indicators, letting you know whether or not the USB ports and the outlets are live. Beneath the display, we've got an array of three different 110 volt AC outlets, which is decent for a compact power station like this one. One, and it's rated for a continuous 1200 watts and a 2400 watt surge which is really impressive for a small power station like this one and we'll be testing out the continuous output a little later in the video to the left of the display we've got a pair of dc ports and on the other side we've got a car style port and our usb output section which includes two usb c ports one of which is a pd100 port which is going to give you lightning fast device charging speeds and two usb type a ports so there's a decent quantity of ports here which is really nice if you have usb heavy power needs. There's also a wireless charging pad on top with a 15 watt output, which is a very convenient way to charge your smartphone that does not require any cables. Now we're going to be jumping into some testing to see if the E600 LFP holds up to some of the most important tasks. And first we'll see if it can continuously run at the 1200 watt max output that it claims. And this matters because we want to know whether or not it can handle the more higher watt power hungry devices. So to test this, we're going to try to push this power station to its limits. And since the device does have a high output rating, we're going to jump right in with a high watt device, which is this hot air gun. And once we plugged it in and turned it on at its highest setting, we were actually able to comfortably run at over 1450 watts continuously, which is a few hundred watts over the continuous watts claim. And I let it run for a few minutes and there was no issues, which is very impressive. Apparently it's got something called intelligent buck drive, which helps it handle more watt hungry devices. And very few power stations that I've tested were able to run this hot air gun, let alone one that's this small. And overall, I was quite impressed with this. Next, we're gonna test the true watt hour capacity of this power station and see how close it comes to the 614 watt hour stated. And this will give you an indication of how long you'll be able to run your devices when you look up their watts. So in order to test this, we've got a wall outlet style power meter, which will display the kilowatt hours. And we'll be running this hot air gun on low, which is running at about 830 watts which will cause the internal fan to come on so it'll be a good test of how efficient this device really is and we're going to take a few minutes to discharge the battery and at the end it's going to give us a measurement of the total watt hours and now the power station does appear to be completely dead and none of the ports are working and the meter is reading 532 watt hours which is about 87 percent of the stated capacity which is excellent and definitely one of the better ones that i've tested and the true cost per usable watt hour is around 62 cents which is actually the most affordable of any of the power Power stations that I've tested in the past, even the larger ones. So I must say that I'm quite impressed with these results. Now that we're down to a 0% charge, we're going to plug in the power station to a wall outlet and see how long it takes to charge. And the charging brick itself is somewhat bulky and less convenient to carry than many other charging setups. On the front of the power station, there's an input, which is what we'll be using for this test. And this is kind of an unusual style cable called the GX165 cable that I have not seen before. And after you plug it in, it does take a few seconds before it starts charging, but you can see on the display that the charging speed is reasonably quick at around 274 watts, which is just shy of the AC input charging speeds claimed. And I plugged it in at 12.40 PM and it was fully charged by 2.45 PM. So the total charge time was two hours and 14 minutes, which is also relatively quick. Another test I like to run on my power stations is a fridge runtime test. And this might be important for those of you who are worried about your food spoiling during a power outage. And this test is pretty straightforward. And what we're going to do is plug in the fridge into the power station and see how long it can run for. I plugged it in in the afternoon at about 3.20 PM. And we did use it normally throughout the day. And I opened and closed it a bunch of times. And it was able to keep the fridge running for a total of eight hours and 17 minutes, which is also really, really really good for a power station this size. 
The final test we're going to be doing on the power station itself is to see if it has a UPS mode and whether or not it can be used as a backup battery for electronics. And right now the power station is plugged into the extension cord. And then we've got a surge protector plugged into the power station with a bunch of different stuff plugged in, including my desktop PC and monitor. And so now we'll unplug the charging cable from the power station. And as you can see, it was able to transition seamlessly from charging to battery powered output exclusively without any disruption to the devices plugged in. So it does work reasonably well as a backup battery for basic electronic devices. Now we're going to test out the Pecron PV200 200 watt solar panel and see what kind of speeds we can get charging up the E600 LFP. This is a mono crystalline panel and it's really lightweight at just over 17 and a half pounds and the setup was pretty straightforward and these panels are relatively easy to configure though the kickstands were a bit flimsy and once I got everything connected and plugged into the power station I was able to get a charging speed of around 165 watts at about 11:20 a.m which is approximately 83 percent of what was claimed which is actually pretty good and this brings the cost per tested watt to around one dollar and 33 cents which is the best of any of the 200 watt panels that I've tested so far and I've tested out a bunch of different solar panels on this channel and compiled all of my testing results into this database and if you want to check that out there will be a link down in the description below we'll wrap things up with my final thoughts on the e600 lfp which currently sells for 329 dollars by itself or 529 if you want to pick it up together with our 200 watt solar panel a few months ago i put together this database of power stations i've tested to help better compare and put each power station strengths and weaknesses into perspective to hopefully give you a better sense of the true value that they offer based on the data that i've collected from tests like you saw earlier in this video so now all the data from this power station is included but for the sake of making the comparison more fair we'll filter it out to include power stations in the $250 to $500 range the Pecron pretty much dominated in every category and it had the highest continuous AC output capabilities by nearly double the tested watt hour capacity was great the cost per watt hour was the most affordable and the charging time was one of the fastest of the small power stations the PV200 solar panel performed really well too and this would make a great companion to the E6 LFP. Overall, I do think this is a great power station and solar panel combo for the price if you need an entry level compact option. And let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section. And if you have any interest in learning more and supporting the channel, please consider using the links down in the description below. And I'll also leave a link to the power station database there as well.